Hi, welcome to the UW Synthetic Biology video series. In this video I'm going to carry on talking about lambda phage. This is the second video in the series. Lambda phage. So if you remember, lambda phage is a virus that infects E. coli. Now what's interesting about lambda phage is that it has two lifestyles. One lifestyle is called the lytic lifestyle, the other called the lysogeny lifestyle. This is the one, the lytic lifestyle is probably the one you're most familiar with. So if I draw the little virus like that, the lambda phage virus like that, in the lytic phase, uh, here's an E. coli cell, it injects the DNA into the E. coli cell and then starts replicating many, many new virus particles. And then eventually the cell bursts and they all pour out, ready to infect the next E. coli. Now the other lifestyle, the lysogeny lifestyle, is quite different. We again start with a single virus. Again, it infects E. coli, but this time, instead of replicating inside E. coli, it actually integrates the DNA into the E. coli main genome. And E. coli is not really aware of this and it'll carry on replicating as if nothing had happened. So we'll have lots of new E. coli's but they will all carry the lambda phage genome that's embedded in the E. coli genome. And E. coli can continue replicating like this many times. Uh, lambda phage is essentially in the dormant phase. And this can go on for many generations. Now, during infection, lambda phage has to decide whether to go the lytic phase or the lysogeny phase. Uh, the rules are that if the cell is healthy, it goes into the goes into the um, lytic phase. If there's um, if if there's over, over infection and it goes into the lysogeny phase. In other words, if there are a lot of viruses already infecting that same E. coli, then it probably means that the E. coli population is on its way down. So it's time to slow down the infection rate and just to lie dormant a while until the population recovers. So those are the two modes. Over the last 50 years, much has been uncovered about the genetic network that's responsible for this decision, and that's what I want to describe now. So let's move on to a fresh page. So let me draw the lambda phage DNA. So this is a lambda phage uh, a section, anyway, of the lambda phage genome. So you imagine it goes all the way to the left, all the way to the right and circles all the way around. Now, there are a number of promoter sites on the lambda phage genome. I'm going to list a couple here. There's one, there's one here called PRM. There's another here called PR. PR for promoter right. Uh, the PR promoter starts a coding sequence that results in production of Crow, and this one results in the production of a protein called CI. On the left here, there's another promoter called PL. This results in the production of a protein called N. There are two terminators, one here and one about here. And there's a reading frame that starts here that encodes a protein called CII. This is a very important protein we're going to deal with. Uh, there are many genes to the left and right which are responsible for building and assembling the um, lambda phage or are responsible for inserting the lambda phage genome into the E. coli genome depending on whether we're doing lytic or, or lysogeny. So this CI 
protein is very important. This basically decides the level of, sorry, CII basically determines whether the cell is going into lysogeny or, or lytic phase. What happens is that uh, CII can be degraded and there are a number of factors that, in, uh, that affect this degradation. So one thing, if the cell is healthy, we get degradation. If the cell is under extreme stress, such as UV radiation, you get degradation. On the other hand, if there's heavy infection, then the degradation is, in, is effectively, then it's not so much that the degradation is inhibited, but it results in a lot more CI being produced because there are more chances for CIII to be made. So to be exact, I should really put, so heavy infection, Heavy infection uh, produces more CII. Okay, so let's follow through what happens during infection. So when lambda phage first goes into the cell, uh, PR and PL are constitutively expressed, and these start producing CRO and N. One thing that CRO does is that it can inhibit production of CI. The other thing that can happen is that N, N is a rather special protein, it uh, will neutralize this terminator so that the read through then goes to the, to the left and it also neutralizes this terminator. So when we first get infection, CRO goes up, inhibits CI, N is expressed and that in turn inhibits uh, this uh, terminator here inhibits this terminator here so we get reading to the left and now of course we get reading to the right and reading to the right results in results in CII. Now if the cell is healthy then CI just gets degraded and we don't have to worry about that um, but it does mean that expression continues to the left and right and that results in lysogeny so sorry in, in the lytic response so crow is an indicator for the lytic phase. Now let's see what happens if when the infection occurs the, the lambda phage finds that the cell is not very healthy in which case degradation is not so high so CII builds up. Now CII there's actually a another promoter here called PRE and this promoter runs in the reverse direction and this promoter is switched on by CII. Now since this promoter is running in the reverse direction when it reads when it reads across the CRO gene it actually produces the complement, mes complement messenger RNA and this in turn effectively inhibits production of CRO and it carries on reading and now starts to read CI so that we end up uh, producing CI. Now CI has some interesting interactions. First thing is that it can stimulate its own production. The second thing is it can shut down CRO and finally it can also shut down N. So we can see what's happening now. So we can see that CRO gets turned down, CI gets turned up, and N gets turned down. If N gets turned down, these terminators become active again. So left and right shut down. CRO shuts down. And so we, we basically get a switch from a, a state that's dominated by CRO to a state that's dominated by CI. In fact, CI is the lysogeny state. And the other thing that happens is, since we got positive feedback here, if the CI gets too high, there's actually a clever mechanism to uh, 
prevent CI from getting too high. In fact, they, there's a similar mechanism on this side as well. Oops, whoops, excuse me. So what happens if the cell is in lysogeny it's an in, and it's integrated into the E. coli genome and something terrible happens? In this case, maybe UV radiation create, uh, damages the DNA, resulting in single-stranded DNA. This uh, invokes the SOS response in E. coli, and lambda phage, the lambda phage CII is susceptible to the SOS response such that if there is, say, a UV, a UV stress, then CI gets degraded. Now, if a CI gets degraded, there's less of this. Therefore, we're no longer inhibiting the production of CRO. We're no longer producing CI. And so CRO starts to rise. It starts to inhibit uh, CI production. With CI in decline, this repression is lifted, so N starts to get made. So with N becoming made, these terminators get switched off, so we get expression left to right. And the entire system then switches to one that's dominated by Crow with hardly any CI, and so we, we go into the lytic phase. So and, uh, this is how then it responds to stress by going into the lytic phase and basically try to replicate and get out of the cell before the cell actually dies. So that summarizes the response that uh, lambda phage has as it enters E. coli and, and how it responds to the different conditions. There's more to this than uh, meets the eye. Uh, there's a lot more action to the left and the right, also involving decisions on lytic and, and lysogenic responses. There are a couple of interactions I've missed out. For example, crow can actually repress N, but this is a little understood effect. Um, but there's an excellent uh, article on the action of this system in the Wikipedia under Lambda Phage, which is very worth reading, which will summarize all these, all these effects.